and it unlocks the turret so you can rotate it to whichever direction that you want. So pretty cool looking. So first we're going to take a look at the Architect M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle and this is a desert train load. So starting from the front we've got the headlights nice and reflective, some molded on detail including some towing shackles here at the bottom. Then we have the treads they look pretty realistic and individually detailed. There's also like weathering so there are some muddy splotches on the treads. Now here's what it looks like on the top. We've got the driver's hatch right here, an air intake grill here, and exhaust vent on the side. Over here we got a pair of smoke grenade launchers. It's actually missing the 25mm Bushmaster chain gun because they removed them for train loads. Then we have hatches for the commander and the gunner as well as this box which is a weapon site. Then we got this tow anti-tank missile launcher. This is a BGM-71. It's really cool. There's a lot of small intricate details on this thing. Architect really did a good job with this. Then we have the side skirts and a marking for an Operation Desert Storm. Uh, some old on details and these things are actually firing ports where they can put machine guns and the troops can fire out of it. Here's another two from the other side and you can see they are diagonal from each other. In the back there's like a storage basket made of metal. Lots of small details and there is a shovel on this side. A tarp covering the back of the tow missile launcher and here on the top there's lots of little things. I'm not exactly sure what they are. In the back we have some rear tail lights, some decals for the unit number and a door which is Bradley can hold six passengers, a towing cable right there, some mud flaps on the sides and some rust weathering. And here's what it looks like on this side. You can check out the suspension down below. And then when this model comes the turret is not actually movable so you have to go on the bottom and there's a screw right here which you could turn to turn the turret. And you can turn the turret a full three 360 degrees although I'm not sure exactly why you would do this because it's a train load overall though it's a pretty nice and realistically detailed model So in addition to the M2, I got the M3 Bradley. Now this is a cavalry fighting vehicle and it comes in forest green. Now in the front we got some decals with the unit number. There's also a black star underneath. There's some yellow stripes in the front and a red one here in the back. And the firing ports are filled in so the M3 does not include that. Here in the back there are some more unit identification here and a black star in the middle. And here's what it looks like on this side. There is some earthy weathering going on. So what's the difference between these two Bradleys? The M2 carries six infantry inside while the M3 is used for scouting and has extra ammunition and here's what it looks like on the side you can see they're basically the same thing it's just the minor detail of the firing ports that are present on the m2 that are not in the m3 and here's how they compare from the back the main difference are just decorative details like the decals and here's what it looks like on the other side again the difference is the firing ports but there also are some extra details on the m2 well the m3 is kind of blank in the back So next up, we're going to take a look at this M88. This is an armored recovery vehicle or ARV. These are used to repair vehicles or pull tanks out of ditches or for combat engineering things like they have a plow here in the front. There's some dirt and mud weathering on it. Then on top, we got the smoke grenade launchers, some headlights in the front corners. You got this towing cable here and some window slits for the crew to see inside. There's definitely a lot of detail in this model, got a spare treader on the side. And this actually uses the same chassis as the M60 tank, very nicely detailed. You can see all the individual spikes and here's what it looks like on the underside. Then we have this towing cable here on the side. I like the fact it has a wavy shape to it. There's a side door here and a spare wheel and another one here, it's smaller. There's just a bunch of random parts like pipes, like gears, all sorts of things in the back of this. Here you got some decals for the unit identification, some tail lights, and at the bottom there's some chains hanging. Now let's go take a look on the other side where the detail is slightly different so there's a shovel right here and there's a door for the APU and a storage compartment and now let's turn it so you can see the front now there also is this antenna on one side 
On the roof, we have some hatches for the mechanic and the driver, and a 50 cal for the commander's cupola right there. You can see all the hatches are open. There's a rigger's hatch in the back, and the boom for the crane, which is in the lying down position. Lots of towing cables throughout, and there's a green spool in the middle. And I like how naturally this cable wraps around the boom. And here's what the bottom looks like. Nice treading detail and a lot of rusting elements. <laughs> Now we're going to take a look at this Operation Desert Storm M1A1 Abrams tank. And this is decorated as the Beowulf. Then we have these Chevron V markings to identify the coalition troops. Small decal on the side and some rust stains going down the panels. This model is pretty well weathered and then on the side you see some more rust stains. And in the back we got the taillights painted in red, gas turbine engine. And here's what it looks like on this side if you're wondering. So in this model all the hatches are open so you see the driver's hatch is open here in the front. We got the smoke grenade launcher and its storage box, a towing chain on the side and some hanging pipe. Then we got some machine guns like the 50 cal and the M240, some storage bags all throughout the back. Then here we have the gunner's sight and the machine guns are on this because it's not a train Load. It's actually combat ready. We also got some spare road wheels, so one here in the front and another one in the back. We've got four ammo boxes hanging off the back turret basket, some unit identification here, and this pole I learned is actually a crosswind sensor, and there are also these antennas on the side which are actually flexible. Then on this side we have two pairs of spare treads. So just like the Bradley, if you go look on the bottom, there's a screw you can turn, and it unlocks the turret so you can rotate it to whichever direction that you want, so pretty cool looking. And if you wanted to use it as a train load, make sure you rotate the turret at 180 degrees because that's what they do in real life and here's how that looks like. It actually looks pretty nice even though this was not designed to be a train load. So now as compared to the actual train load, now the Beowulf is a lot more heavily weathered than the train load version. Like I'm surprised of the color difference between the two. The train load also includes this tie down chain that anchors the main gun. Well that's not present on Beowulf. Beowulf also includes the machine gun still mounted on as well as the hatches opened up which are not present on actual train loads which they remove the machine gun so they don't get stolen. It in addition to a spare road wheel, the Beowulf also has more normally painted taillights, and the treads are darker. The Beowulf has a lot of baggage and materials on top, while the tank load is simple and clean. So that's all the Architect military vehicles we're going to unbox today. Now we just need some more DODX flat cars. So I got some more of these DODX 40,000 series flat cars for military trains from Springwell Depot. And if you saw my how to get model trains video, you can see they were all sold out. But luckily, they sent me an email saying they found some in the warehouse, so I got some more. So this one's manufactured by FGE, and this one is a Thrall. So here is FGE's font and grab iron, and they have a different style from Thrall's, which is bolder, and the grab iron is indented. And if we make our way to the B end of the car, we have the handbrake on the side. The Thrall uses an Elcon model 7900, while the FGE uses a Waptec 9020. And they are below the deck, so vehicles can't hit it. Also, a weird thing I noticed, the grab iron next to the handbrake is actually a different style from all the other corners and this goes the same for Thrall as well. Now here's a look at the underside. Now they're actually different design air brake systems as well. So here is the Thrall version of it compared to the FGE which they rotated the air tanks and also on the ends the air brake hoses actually stick out on the FGE and the FGE also has a third channel on the deck. So finally, we have the Bradley fighting vehicles on the DODX flat car. So here's what it looks like from the front. You can see the treads actually line inside the flat car, unlike the Abrams tank because this is a smaller vehicle. And here's how they look like from the other side. It's pretty nice and realistic. Definitely really cool. And here's what the M1 Abrams tank and the M88 look like on the flat car. It looks really nice. Even though these are not designed for train loads since they have their hatches and their machine guns out. It still looks cool regardless. So now that we assembled our whole military train, let's go send them out.
So for my final thoughts, I think Architect did an amazing job with these military vehicles. They are very realistically detailed, weathered, and decorated. Since it's a ready-made model, not a kit, you can immediately use it on your layout. You don't have to spend time assembling, painting, weathering, and decaling it. The Bradleys don't come with their iconic chain gun because it's a train load, so it may look off, but I still think they look great without it, and it's more realistic that way. The MAD and the Abrams tank are combat ready, so they still have their machine guns and their hatches are all open, so it's not exactly realistic for a train load, but it does doesn't look bad. I really like the weathering of the Beowulf compared to the train load Abrams and the way they painted the taillights look better as well. All the models are based on ones from Operation Desert Storm in 1991 so they are a bit different from contemporary vehicles which have since been upgraded. However the M1A1, the M2, M3 Bradleys and the M88 are all still used by the US military and they're actually planning to send some of these to Ukraine in the future. As for the Spring Mills Depot DODX flat cars, it's very interesting to see all the little variations of detail between the two cars. They definitely spent a lot of time getting things accurate and they're well worth their price. They are coming out with a new run due in October with the conspicuity stripes although they raised the price by $5. And if you're wondering where I got these from, the Architect vehicles are hard to find but I did get the Bradleys from Panzerfux.de which is from Germany and the M88 and the Abrams tank from eBay also a seller from Germany and the DODX flat cars came from SpringMillsDepot.com. This video has been a long time coming and I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do make sure you hit that like button down below comment if you want to see more videos like this subscribe if you had already and i'll see you guys in the next one bye